It's a, it's a pleasure seeing you in person. I've seen you in TV and right, uh, right. in cassettes and everything. Right, right. Uh, I, couldn't, I wouldn't want to miss this opportunity. Wow. How about for the benefit of me, who don't, <laughs> I don't know you, <laughs> how about an, a, a form of introduction? Um, well, uh, my name is Ahmed Didat. Ahmed Didat. Ahmed Didat. Okay. I'm from South Africa. Okay. Yes. And uh, I guide visitors to the mosque. One of my jobs in South Africa, India, is to guide tourists to the mosque, like these people in the cultural center. Mm -hmm. So we have a center that we get visitors to the mosque, and we get a lot of tourists coming along. More than 12,000 a year we handle. So we explain to them the relationship between ourselves and the Jews and the Christians, that almost everything the Muslim does is in your Bible. It's in the Christian Bible. I don't know whether you've been to a Muslim house of prayer. Have you been? I have. Yes, I have been. I was in the... Uh, the first thing you're made to do is to take off your shoes. Except here. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason behind that is that Moses, when he was on Mount Sinai, God spoke to him and he said, Draw not thy hither, put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place where thou standest is holy ground. In respect of that commandment, we Muslims, we take off our shoes. Before we go in for prayer, we make ablution. All the exposed parts of the body are being washed. The hands, the feet, the nostrils, the nape of the neck, gargling the mouth, brushing the teeth. This the Muslim does five times a day, every day of the year. The one who's particular with his prayers. And purely from the hygienic point of view, no one is going to find fault with a person who washes himself five times a day. It's a good hygienic practice in any country, among any community. You know, washing yourself, brushing your teeth, so five times a day, good hygienic practice. Secondly, it serves certain psychological purposes, meaning mentally it's preparing the person for prayer. He's washing not because he's dirty. He's washing because he's going to meet his Lord. So it creates a mental attitude. Thirdly, this is also another commandment given by God Almighty to the Holy Prophet Moses in the book of Exodus. That is the second book of the Bible. It is written. You don't, you don't mind. No, no, no. In the second book of Exodus, so it reads, And Moses and Aaron and the son. And Moses and Aaron and the sons washed their hands and the feet they had. When they went into the tent of the congregation, they washed as the Lord commanded Moses. So we Muslim are still fulfilling another biblical commandment. Though we haven't got the label of a Jew, nor yet that of a Christian, yet in all humility we claim that we are more Jewish than the Jews and more Christians than the Christians. In this, that we are trying to follow in the footsteps of the prophets. So this is my line of activity. Mm -hmm. I can and answer people's questions, you know, any question that they have, I answer. Mm -hmm. This is my pastime <coughs> hobby or occupation. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's who. Ahmed Abdi. Ahmed Abdi. Ahmed Abdi. Ahmed Abdi. Okay. D-Dad. 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 Oh, call me uncle. Call me uncle. D-Dad. Alright, you should have told me that this was the you were author of this and then I would have looked at this and I said, I'm buying Dida. Call me uncle if you are not ashamed. Oh, I'm not ashamed of anything. So, it's an idiot. Uncle, uncle, I can call you my son. Alright, uncle. Yes. Alright. Okay, so I take it then you are the author also of... Oh yes, I'm an author of a number of little booklets. Yes, okay. Of these commandments that you just spoke of, are yes. those commandments also in the Quran to follow? Or are they in the Hadith? No, I wouldn't be able to pinpoint. But you know, we accept that this is what the teaching is. Taking off the shoes is in the Quran. Ablution is also in the Quran. It's in the Quran. That we must wash ourselves. And also in the Bible. You have quoted you have quoted the Bible. Yes. And so I, I would take it then you have you are well read in the Bible. Oh yes. Oh, I'm well read in the Bible. Okay. I can't. Okay. 
I've never read recipes, I don't. I don't think they're good. <laughs> so I, could, I, don't uh, think. I wouldn't know what you were challenging with um, a recipe because we never read recipes. I don't, I don't read that. I don't. No. No. If, if, if Mr. Rusty wrote that, that kind of vulgarity. Huh. That is what I want well, the Britishers and the Americans to know. Well, I, well, well no, we don't know. No, no, we don't know. I don't know wrote, but I don't no, know because the British and the Americans have been defending him to say freedom of speech is a right, freedom mm. of speech. Sure. Like you said, we have freedom to talk. You have a freedom to talk to me. Mm. But, but word, I, I have no right to abuse your mother. <laughs> I have no right to abuse your mother. You don't like this freedom. Uh, I can call you go, man. You know, you don't know what you're talking about. And, uh, we talk like that. But now if I start abusing your mother, taking your mother's name, calling her names, man, you have a right to punch it, to throw a punch. So in other words, now the guy went to extremes. He told things about us, which hurt us very much. But at the same time, he didn't spare the Americans. He didn't spare the British. He didn't spare the, the black man. He didn't spare any white woman. So, but this is because the people didn't know we started crying, so it made people happy. People you know, who, who are terrified of us, who think that we are a challenge, it made them happy. So I went on a lecture tour of Britain and America, and I spoke about how Rushdie fooled the West. How he fooled the West. Uh, guess what? I think there's three in here that he didn't fool because we don't know what Rusty is. Right. <laughs> but, uh, but the guys, the fools who said now, you know, sure. you are blocked, you stuck, and you, know, you are for him. Mm -hmm. Although, so then so you didn't know if you read and then if you say, no, I don't mind what he says about sure. my mother, or about your mother, about your mother, sure. then you have a right to say, look, I said, man, this is nothing. If he called your mother, and he said, no, I mean, I, it didn't hurt my mother, my mother is already dead and she's buried. No, that would be something. You say, no, I call him your mother. And you say, no, I, I, this is a joke, man. It's only a joke. So that kind of thing. However, that is not our subject. No, so that's not our subject. But although I, I wanted to ask, though, yes. do you agree with the the um? What is it? They put out a. What did they do? The fatwa. The fatwa. Yeah, the fatwa. Yes, in uh, from Iran. No, it's actually biblical. That fatwa is actually in your holy Bible. Do you know that? What do you mean, Fatwa? What do you mean by that? Fatwa, the decree of death. The decree of death. The decree of death. The sound of sound and rusty. Oh, for well, blasphemy? Yes, oh, yes, 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 yes. That's in your Holy Bible. Yes. Did you know that? Do you know that? Why you oh, blasphemy, that? yeah. Blasphemy is definitely not. Death, death or blasphemy? Go. In your Bible? Oh, sure, definitely. Sure. Blasphemy. Right, so, okay. so it's biblical. See, what Homin is supposed to have said, or a decree had passed, is in the Holy Bible. That is biblical. Unless you say you don't accept that. You don't accept the Bible as the word of God. Then it's different. But if you accept it as the word of God, it's binding on you and me. Now I believe that. <laughs> <laughs> I believe, I believe <laughs> that. <laughs> now, now, we, now, we, now we're at a point where we can probably discuss. Because I do believe that it is binding upon Yes. Now you read it, but obviously I don't think you take it as being binding upon you. It depends on that, you see. Because in the Holy Bible, mm -hmm. the one that you hold it, yes, we recognize three different types of evidences. Three different types of evidences. We find one type of evidence where we recognize as the word of God. You know the statements that I made. For example, Deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 18. It reads, I will raise them up a prophet. Yes. I I will raise them up a prophet. Yes. From among the brethren, like unto thee, like you. Like unto you. Like Moses. Moses. And I will put my words in his mouth. That's right. And he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. Yes. 